as we were discussing on the different kinds of uh, fax controllers one of the classifications that we can find is uh, how based on how the uh, controller is connected uh, or interfaced with the transmission system so here on uh, figure b you can see the controller is added in series with the transmission line so this is an example of a uh, series compensation control series compensation fax device uh, or uh, the basic configuration or uh, the conceptual configuration diagram uh, the bc part is what uh, is actually the one that is connected in shunt the shunt vs and the shunt is connection is with the uh, uh, load side of the transmission line so the point of compensation from the, at the point of compensation the particular uh, fax device is connected as shunt with the parts that remain to the load side of the transmission line or the point of coupling so that is the <coughs> basic difference between series and uh, shunt compensation the in, in series compensation what the difference is that uh, they add they inject a particular series voltage and by controlling that voltage or the injected voltage uh, we can uh, control what is the uh, current flow in that particular line and thus if we can control the current flow we finally control what is the system performance or uh, we can improve or uh, we can increase or decrease whatever is the voltage um, that's basically depending on how we control the uh, series controller similarly on the shunt device instead of but instead of having a injecting a voltage this particular component injects a current into the uh, transmission line so basically it uh, a pump, uh, it pumps a current which is uh, either in uh, phase quadrature or in it does in uh, if it is in phase quadrature that would mean that uh, the current that's flowing in the transmission line and the current that is uh, injected by the uh, by the fax controller there uh, the one is the one is active and the other is in reactive nature or basically there there is a reactive power injection that's happening into the system but if the current in the transmission line is uh, reactive it could be different it could uh, we may not be able to completely identify what is the uh, based on the phase quadrature or not it uh, that doesn't uh, sound much uh, sound good in that scenario so basically this component it injects a uh, current into the transmission line and that current is dependent on how the net current that is flowing towards the load side is supposed to vary uh, on coming back on coming to uh, figure D, what we have here is a series series controller. A series series controller uh, that is uh, one controller is connected in series with one transmission line, then the other is con uh, connected in series with another transmission line, and both are interconnected by using a DC power link. The DC power link, as in uh, it means that uh, there is there can be power transfer between the transmission lines as such. That is since the dc power line is connected between the is connected on on towards on like it's they are kind of interconnected there could be a, a power flow or a, that is happening between the con, uh, controllers that are connected on both the transmission lines uh, that is it's not a, just any control line or a dc control line it's actually a power link that is the difference in case of a series controller so you can uh, control the power flow between the different transmission lines based on what is the requirement suppose uh, for example if we say the top line that it has a power carrying capability of let's say uh, current carrying capability of let's say 100 ampere and the one below it has a current carrying capacity of uh, again 100 ampere let's take in that particular sense and but uh, the difference is that the top line is having low resistance and the bottom line is having a high resistance it would mean that uh, the whatever uh, is the load that is being supplied the top line will carry more current and the bottom line will be carrying a lesser current since the resistance is higher on the lower line thus the problem is what happens is uh, as the more current is getting injected the tendency of the current is to flow in the top line and if when the net generated current it becomes uh, 200 ampere or even less than 200 ampere the top line um, hits the value or the mark of 100 ampere and it tends to rise it tends to continuously rise because the bottom line in in, in the absence of these fax device the current in the top line would continuously go go on increasing because the resistance in that particular line is very low and it continues to get heated up and that might lead to some disastrous effects 
but in presence of these uh, fax devices what they can do was they can control the current that is flow or they can have an interconnection current flow that is uh, transferring the excess high current that is coming on the top line through the dc power link towards the secondary line and transmit the power through the secondary line that is if the uh, top line hits a 100 ampere mark whatever excess current is coming it can divert it back to the second line and the power transmission can takes place in the second line uh, for this uh, the different kinds of uh, controllers could be used uh, which we will uh, be looking into at a later point of time but uh, the basic idea or the basic uh, use is this much now moving on to the next category that is we are coupling a series com uh, controller along with the shunt controller that is the one component would inject a current that is in uh, a favor of improving the voltage of the system and the series component would bring about when would inject a series voltage that would also control the reactive power operation of the system uh, instead of having a dc power link connection between these two what they are having is a coordinated control that is uh, this particular control system would uh, control what is the output of uh, the shunt connection and also the series connection and uh, how the voltage or the so what should be the series injected voltage and what should be the shunt injected current based on what is the system performance some expansions to the previously discussed systems is what is given here um, previously when we uh, so uh, shunt controller what we actually had was a coordinated controlling part whereas in this figure the figure f what we have is a dc power link that is connecting the uh, series comp uh, series as well as uh, shunt components of the fax controller so what happens is there could be uh, actual dc power exchange or uh, active power exchange between the uh, two or there could be dc power exchange between that's happening between the series and shunt controllers and the uh, a power exchange would uh, aid the operation of the system in a in a helpful way good in a in, uh, to improve the, what is the transient stability and the voltage stability of the system uh, the other additions that uh, come with these are uh, uh, considering figure G. What we have here is a unified controller. That is, uh, we can also call it as an interline power flow controller, because uh, what we have is a DC power link which actually connects uh, the two controllers, and also this particular controller can uh, control what is the current that is flowing through different AC lines. This is applicable to. Uh, a uh, big or a uh, very big transmission line with multiple number of uh, transmission lines carrying uh, current in towards different areas of the system also uh, there are other kinds of uh, systems which uh, offer much better um, opportunities when compared to simple uh, series controllers and shunt controllers uh, who are these is uh, consider the series uh, controller that is given in figure h Compared to the normal uh, controller, what uh, is given in addition is that it, uh, this particular series uh, controller is actually con connected with a storage device. This particular storage device could be a battery, so what touch it actually provides is an opportunity to save even active power in addition to the injection or control of reactive power. Uh, why? Because if we can uh, save this, uh, we can uh, if there is an excess of power that's flowing in the transmission line because there is a sudden loss of load or a sudden high load is getting switched off in the circuit there is an excess of generation and that excess generation can be stored into the uh, into the storage that's incorporated with the fax device so thus a uh, sense of active power stability or uh, transient stability can be incorporated into the system also in cases of uh, uh, excess uh, reactive or in case of a reactive power deficiency that is happening at a lower point of time the storage could be used as a source of generation of reactive power and that power could be not just reactive power even active power it can be pumped into the system based on the requirement of what is happening or uh, what, what is the system or what is the system requirement similar is the case with this uh, shun based storage controller and also the uh, combined shunt series uh, controller where uh, the DC power link is interconnecting the series and shunt components and that particular uh, series component is what is uh, is uh, what is powering up the storage unit that is incorporated with the combined series shunt controller so that was about one type of uh, fax controllers that we uh, used to discuss there are another kind of fax controller which we will see in a moment
the second kind of classification it basically uh, we, we uh, that it also consists of uh, the series shunt and the com other uh, fax controllers that we discussed in the previous section that may even come as subsets of this particular classification uh, what uh, what is the what is this particular classification include it uh, basically comes with the first type of category that comes under this is uh, called as uh, variable impedance type uh, static var compensators or static var generators or basically it means that the different con uh, kinds include variable impedance or switching impedance type converters whereas the other kind is switching converter type controllers what is the difference between these two is that the variable impedance type controllers they bring and what they bring into the system is the fax controller that we add into the system just uh, similar to the way we use this uh, series and shunt controllers what they what actually these uh, variable impedance type controllers do is they modify or they add compensating impedances or reactances into the transmission system such that whatever the transmission system impedances they are getting compensated for example one kind of variable impedance uh, transmit uh, variable impedance type of fax controller is thyristor switched capacitor the name that is given here that is uh, the thyristor switched capacitor uh, what it does is uh, it adds a particular value a controlled value of capacitance is added into the transmission system based on what is the transmission line or the load inductive reactance or whatever is the amount of inductance in the transmission system that is supposed to be compensated by using this trans this capacitive value so as to bring the system voltage back to the normal level uh, another kind is what is known as a thyristor controlled reactor that is what we would be adding into the system is a reactor that is an, an, an additional inductance is what is added into the system this inductance is added into the system in such a way that they control what is the uh, they uh, consume the reactive power that's flow flowing in the system so basically the application comes in a situation where there is an excess of reactive lagging reactive power present or generated into the system so this is one kind of classification uh, the other kind the second kind is switching converter type VAR generators or VAR compensators. Uh, what is the difference between this is that instead of adding uh, compensating impedance or reactance into the system, what we will be adding is we will be adding uh, actual uh, converters which are normal, uh, normally like the voltage source or current source converters. They are added into the system as compensation devices and not just as an impedance they are actually added as a source uh, for example the conventional overexcited synchronous generator or the synchronous condenser that we used to use it actually provides a overexcited synchronous motor so what it does is it uh, is given over excitation such that whatever is the excess excitation or the excess reactive power that that particular motor is having it injects that into the transmission system similarly um, the this particular kind of system what it does is it mimics the operation of this uh, overexcited synchronous motor or the synchronous condenser and how it does that is by using a dc energy source coupled with a voltage source converter or any kind of voltage source or the current source converter any dc to ac kind of converter the figure shows the operation of uh, an overexcited synchronous uh, motor or a synchronous compensator or synchronous condenser which is connected to the transmission line so basically the what we are doing with a switching converter type of uh, fax controller is that we replace or we replace the section where we have the exciter and the generator and we replace it with uh, a power electronic converter the change is achieved by using this that is the place where we had the exciter is now replaced with a dc to ac switching circuit uh, switching converter which is on the other side coupled with a source this particular source uh, is, it could be a dc energy source or dc energy saving device um, so that is basically about the dif uh, different so this is the second category of uh, uh, classification of fax controllers and uh, we have now dealt with what are the different kinds of uh, fax controllers that is the shunt series combined shunt, uh, combined shunt and series and combined series series type of controllers as one particular classification and uh, uh, switching impedance or varying impedance type uh, static VAR generators along with uh, switching capacitor kind of uh, VAR generators both are static in nature because we are not using any rotational devices so that is all about the different kinds of classifications uh, let's study more in the, uh, the next
following lecture.